Good evening. Welcome to the RU Recovery Program Transformation Tuesday broadcast. I'm so thankful that you've tuned in this evening and I hope that you've had a, a blessed week so far. I know we're just a couple days into the new week, but uh, hope that you're having a good time and having a good week. And uh, we love you here at the program and uh, those faithful leaders and students. I say hello to you and thank you leaders for your faithfulness to the program. And I pray for all of you daily. And it's just an honor to serve Jesus Christ here in this great recovery program. And uh, so thankful for you. Tonight, if you've got a Bible, if you'll grab your Bible and uh, get a piece of paper and a pen, something to write on, uh, and turn to the book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. I'll give you just a moment to find it. It is uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, Ezekiel. No, that's not it. Uh, it's uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Ezekiel. No, that's not it. Uh, try Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. And I'll give you just a moment to find it. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at the 10 pillars of the RU Recovery Program. And uh, these are the foundational principles that the program is based off of and, and how the program got started. And uh, we've been looking at those over the last several weeks and we've made it through six of them so far. And uh, I wanna challenge you tonight uh, if you'll jot down my phone number, 615-543-5703. And if you can, without cheating, okay, if you can name three of the pillars that we've looked at so far, okay? I want you to give me the pillar number and the pillar, uh, or of course, the title of that pillar. And if you'll do that, I've got a gift for you, okay? It could be this nice pack of Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh, wouldn't that be great? You're probably just finishing up dinner, and man, wouldn't it be wonderful to have these? And you know, these are my favorite candies. And so jot that down so you don't ever forget that. Uh, my birthday is January 24th, and, and really my birthday is any day if you're giving me Reese's peanut butter cups. I like to keep these in the refrigerator. Sometimes I keep them in the freezer. Uh, that's how I got the broke tooth, not just kidding. But that's how I like to eat them, it's cold right out of the refrigerator. And so. If you can name three of these pillars, okay, of the recovery program, uh, text those over to me tonight, 615-543-5703. And the first three folks that text me with three of those pillars, I'm gonna have something very special for you, something sweet. And uh, I think it may be something similar to this, uh, but you'll have to find out when you come Friday night, okay? And I'll have these gifts waiting for you. And so I've, I think I've given you plenty of time now to get to the book of Ezekiel. We're looking in chapter 36. Did I tell you that already? Chapter 36. I want to read some incredible verses to you. Of course, the entire Bible is incredible. Every word is, is, uh, is God-breathed, God-inspired. And, and uh, this is God uh, speaking through Ezekiel, through the Holy Spirit, speaking through Ezekiel uh, to, the, uh, to God's people in Israel. But he's speaking to us tonight as well, okay? Uh, every word of God is for us. And uh, it may have not been written to us, but it was written for us. And so tonight, let's look at Ezekiel 36 by way of introduction. Pillar number seven tonight, okay? And you cannot use this one when you text me later, all right? You can't use it when you text me. But pillar number seven tonight, the Holy Spirit is our greatest advocate in recovery. The Holy Spirit is our greatest advocate in recovery. Look at Genesis 36, beginning at verse 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Of course, this is God speaking to his people in Israel. Then verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You know, tonight, all the way back at Ezekiel's day, God made a promise that he has fulfilled through Jesus Christ in the life of many believers. See, before Jesus, the Holy Spirit would be with God's chosen person. 
He would come on that person and, and, and be uh, as a presence, if you will, in the life of that individual, whether it be a prophet or whoever it may be that God used. And uh, he would be on that person and he would show forth God's power. He would show forth God's presence so that God was seen and so God was known. But then listen, the Holy Spirit would then leave. And tonight we have a promise from God that not only has he given us the Holy Spirit, if you're a child of God, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, God has given us the Holy Spirit. Listen what Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 17, the latter part of that verse, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and listen to this and shall be in you. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, John chapter 16, beautiful verses, verses seven through 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, then the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, who? The Holy Spirit, the comforter. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. He is a comforter. Do you need comfort tonight? I know I do. I, we all do. Uh, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has another name. He's called the comforter, uh, the paraclete. He's, it's, the, it's one of the same kind. It's not somebody different. You know, let me say this tonight. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And so we're speaking of the Comforter tonight. John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Again, the Word of God is so practical and so easy to be understood. He says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit tonight, get this, he teaches us and he convicts us of our sin-filled heart and our sin-filled life. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts us to make a decision, uh, to confess, if you will. Confess simply means to agree with God. Uh, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess or agree with God, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I pray that you know that verse. Uh, jot this verse reference down, Ephesians 2, 3, if you will. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, listen, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Tonight, let me say this, we are sinners by nature. We were born in sin. We were conceived in sin. But we're sinners tonight by nature, but we're also sinners tonight by choice. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11, we looked at these verses last week, and such were some of you. Just before this, the Holy Spirit gives us a list of folks who were living in sin. And now this church at Corinth was made up of folks who, if you will, were addicted. If you will, they, were, they had stubborn habits in their life and, and they made a lot of bad choices and bad decisions. And, but when they met the Lord, they came to Christ, they surrendered their life to him. And, and uh, listen, God took their life and transformed their life. And he did it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And tonight, the Bible verse says in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, and such were some of you. The apostle Paul is telling them, listen, the list of people that I just read off to you, the adulterers and murderers and fornicators and so many others that he mentioned. Listen, what he says, you used to be in this category, but now look, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen, and by the spirit of our God. Praise God for the Holy Spirit tonight. Can I give you quickly just three truths, just quickly, three truths about the Holy Spirit and not just about the Holy Spirit, but about the Holy Spirit filled life. God wants you and I to be spirit filled children of God. 
When we are spirit filled, listen, we're, we're walking in agreement with God. We're, we're walking in agreement about what his word says. We're walking in agreement with other Christian folks who are going in the same way. Uh, the Bible commands us in Galatians chapter five, not to walk in the flesh. Because if we do that, we'll fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the Bible says we're to walk in the spirit. Listen, to walk in the spirit is to take repeated steps in the same direction that God is going. It's to take repeated steps in the same direction that your challenge group leader is going. It's to take repeated steps in the same direction that your pastor is preaching or teaching you from the word of God. And when we hear the word of God, the Holy Spirit, listen, he agrees with what the word of God is saying and, and he convicts our hearts to make a decision. And so number one tonight, let me say quickly about the Holy Spirit filled life. The true source of victory over sin is the Holy Spirit of God. Spiritual maturity in our lives is not produced by a program like the RU Recovery Program. And it's not merely a local New Testament church, although God uses these great uh, entities, if you will, the church, the RU Recovery, faith-based, Christ-centered recovery program. God uses that. But ultimately, it is the Holy Spirit of God who transforms the lives of those who had been fornicators into lives of purity. Those who were idolaters into worshipers of the one and only true God. Those who had been effeminate into masculine men. And those who were thieves into honest and upstanding citizens. Every time someone is victorious in the Christian life, every time someone is sanctified in spirit, soul, and body, listen, it is because of the power of the Spirit of God. And number two, we are saved by his power. We are saved by his power. First Corinthians 6, 11, we just read it a moment ago, talks about the fact that we are being washed, not by water, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ cleanses us, listen, from all sin. This is true about our past sins when we are saved, but it just is true for our present and future sins. The blood continues to cleanse us from our sins so that we may stand unashamed boldly before the throne of grace. Isn't that wonderful? Remember this, we are not there because of our goodness, but because of his righteousness. He became sin for us that we could be forgiven. And then number three, lastly tonight, we are sanctified by his power. Jesus purchased more than just the salvation that comes with the washing of his blood. The Bible also says we are sanctified. God had taken us as a chosen vessel and cleaned us so that we can be useful to his service and to his kingdom. God is the source of our sanctification, just as he is the source of our salvation. God is involved in your life. He is now working in our world through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it is the Spirit of God that we see referenced in our passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He is the active agent, get this, he is the active agent of salvation and our sanctification. Isn't it wonderful tonight that we don't have to do this work on our own? The Holy Spirit works with us. The Holy Spirit works for us. And greatest of all, the Holy Spirit works in us to change us from the inside out. You know, the world wants to change you from the outside and then work their philosophy within. But God, listen, he starts on the inside and he makes the changes in our life necessary to bring uh, him pleasure, necessary to bring us his blessings and necessary to have our prayers answered. Hallelujah tonight for God. Hallelujah for the Holy Spirit who changes and dwells us and lives within our lives tonight. Apart from Jesus Christ, we have no hope. We have no real purpose and we have no real life. Tonight, we looked at pillar number seven. The Holy Spirit is our greatest advocate in recovery. And I hope you understand better and, and I hope that you see fully tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is our true hope. The Lord Jesus Christ is our true purpose. And the Lord Jesus Christ, listen, is our life. Isn't that wonderful? I hope that encouraged you tonight. 
And I hope that you'll make plans now to join us this coming Friday at 7 p.m. right here on our campus. When you turn in off the main road onto Academy Drive, you just follow those Are You Recovery signs with that arrow. You just follow it right up the hill and, and you'll follow right to the entrance of the program. This Friday night, we'll be celebrating all of those who have birthdays here in the month of August, okay? That may be you tonight. You could come Friday night and we'll celebrate you. We'll celebrate your birthday and, and you're sitting there already. You're wondering, man, I wonder what they're going to do. I wonder how they're going to celebrate birthdays. Listen, I'm not going to tell you at all. You've got to be here to see it, okay? But I promise you this, it's going to be fun, fun, and a, a little bit more fun, okay? But you have to be here. We have plenty of seats for social distancing, I promise. And we have plenty of hand sanitizer. If not, I'll go out and get some more. And we have plenty of masks, okay, if you need one. And can I say this quickly before I'm done? If you were here Friday, like if you decided to come and you decided to be here at 7 p.m. Friday night, let me just tell you, I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? It would be the greatest Friday in the history of Fridays. I'm just telling you. We're going to have a great time, but you're going to make it even better just by you being present and you being here with us. Thank you again for watching tonight's broadcast of the RU Recovery Program's Transformation Tuesday. I hope you've had a blessed week, and I hope you'll continue to have a wonderful week. Uh, we love you. We miss you here at the RU Recovery Program. And, but, but again, we extend the invite to you that may be watching tonight, or you may pick up and watch this video another time. We meet every Friday night at 7 p.m. We'd love for you to come be a part of it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed evening.